Ladies and gents, welcome back to another session, another day of doing things. Man rock up to desk, he make desk go up, and he do things. I'll give you a little recap on last video. We're doing some physics stuff, all right? But at some point, I was like, you know what? I don't know how to do uh, basic vector math, like uh, cross products and shit. So you need to learn how to do that. <laughs> and you know what I did? I reached out to the lovely, lovely people and brilliant. And now I am brilliant. <laughs> I, no. I, of course, am not brilliant. I do not represent brilliant. I'm just a man who's using brilliant and happens to uh, be affiliated with them now. I'm kind of hoping that this is going to be the solution to my problem of just being shit at math. <laughs> so today, what well, literally all we're going to do is just work through, see what brilliant has to offer, trying to feel out where my, where my borders lie and uh, hopefully stretch him out a little bit. Because I tell you what, Picasso didn't learn to paint by watching lectures. Nah, -uh, uh As much as you like to think you're making progress by sitting there and watching the lecture and not taking anything in or practicing any of that knowledge, trust me, it really doesn't go too well. Grade 11 and 12 math, that's that, that's exactly what I tried to do. Didn't do any of the homework, didn't write anything down. I I kind of just sat there and I was like, I'm, I'm definitely going to absorb all this knowledge. All right, well, I think we're starting off with like just literally basic algebra. All right, visual arithmetic. To make sense of number relationships, we'll develop a set of visual tools that let us examine, manipulate, and ultimately understand arithmetic. These tools should make algebra seem less like a totally new idea and more like a perfectly natural extension of things you already understand. By the time we're done, arithmetic and algebra will feel like a connected set of intuitive ideas. You see, I'm pretty sure I already know algebra, but at the same time, how about we just run through this whole thing to see if I actually, actually know, you know? 16 plus five is equal to 11. Ah, okay. So we're just like going down the the tree and solving it. All right, that makes sense. Bar models. In bar models, like the one here, the length of the bar is proportional to their values. Yep. The entire bar is set to show pieces. What is the length of the other piece of the bar? 15. Let's go, baby. <laughs> oh, God damn it. The one I won't start using algebraic notation for a while, but it's worth noticing now that these visual tools map directly to the equation solving skills we're building in the course. Let's see how we can manipulate these pictures to solve problems. Zofia bought two video games. Yo, gamer? That's crazy. Uh, their price is at a difference of $15 and you spent $45 in total. How much did the cheaper of the two games cost? Well, two video games, their price is at a difference of $15 and she spent $45 in total. Oh, 30. Am I dumb? Alright, cool. What? <laughs> Why am I so you see, all right, that first one was a throw. This this was unironically not a throw. <laughs> How much did the cheaper of the two games cost? Not the most expensive one. Read the question, Randy, all right? Read the fucking question. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you guys, all right? Shut up. <laughs> all right, also, before I forget, if you would like access to the Discord Crack Den, all my source code, a bunch of other cool rewards, then... Uh, you can get it for free if you head on over to twitch.tv slash randy. Drop a Prime Gaming subscription if you have an Amazon Prime account. Go over to the website, randy.gg slash prime. Link your account. You can get a free membership. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, rewards over there showing up on screen right now. If you like any of them, we'd really, uh, really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Circle puzzle. I could fuck with this. Come on. Give it to me. Dash red arrows mean a number is formed by adding and soul blue arrows mean numbers number is formed by multiplying. For example, the seven here is made with two plus two plus three, and the 21 is made with seven times three. All right, what number must go in the circle with a question mark? Seven. Let's go, baby, let's go. What number must go in the circle with a question mark? Uh, let's work backwards. So this is times. So 16 divided by two is eight. Eight, three plus what is equal to eight? Five, easy peasy. In this lesson, we looked at visual tools that help us think about relationships with numbers. Seeing relationships can turn to abstract problems into something much more approachable. Very true. Be a major theme of this course. The next lesson will focus spatially on the bar models and the arithmetic they can help us better understand. How likely are you to recommend Brilliant to a friend or colleague looking to learn basic math? Link in description, boys. That's uh, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Algebra is about the relationships between quantities, some of which are unknown. Before we can know what arithmetic perform, we need to think about how the values are connected. Bar model just shows 
the first 42 years of Jade's life. Jade is 16 now. In how many years will she be 42? I don't know, what's 42 take 16? 26? When asked about his birthday, Wang said, the sum of the day and the month I was born is 13. I fucking hate this guy. When someone asks about your birthday, you just like pull out one of these. Fucking Wang, dude. Fucking Wang. You know that he was born in August when is, when, it, when is his birthday. The sum of the day and the month I was born is 13. Born in August. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, 8. Day in the month I was born is 13. 8 plus... Oh, five. I see. So that's how it comes in handy. That's really nice. That's a just completely different way of looking at it. By the way, totally and not drinking caffeine for like the third video in a row. Nah. -uh. Couldn't be me. Nope. I ain't addicted. This lesson you will use variables to help descriptions of abstract puzzles or real world situations involving finances and trading. Hell yeah. We'll start with a problem about fair trade to expand our sticker collection, Martha. Martha. Frequently swaps. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm so aggressive to Martha. Martha frequently swaps stickers with fellow collectors. All right, you know what? I fucking hate Martha. She figures as 12 of her cat stickers would be worth five stickers from a new koala collection. The variable C represents the worth of one cat sticker and K represents the worth of a koala sticker. What would be a fair ex what would a fair exchange look like according to Martha? Five times K is equal to twelve times C. If we express Martha's, Martha's sticker exchange as an equation, which is a mathematical statement that says two so values are equal. Other course we'll be practicing writing down equations, we'll also learn how to show over them. Okay, okay, okay. So we know all the values except for A. Yep. What is A? Ten. Take away twenty two. Twelve. Divided by three. Another one in the bag, baby. Let's go. Well, I think that's the first chapter. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, so let's uh, let's actually just look ahead and see if there's anything useful, uh, because that is all very basic stuff. But at the same time, maybe kind of need that. I don't know. Variables of notation, master the art of math of letters. You see, this is my problem. I look at this and go, and eh, this is this is kind of easy. But at the same time, there's a few things in here that it's like. I could really kind of hone in on that, you know, because a little bit rusty. I tell you what though, we are going to look at um, the like all the courses that, that we're going to be going through. We do need to get to um, vector math eventually. I feel like this is all definitely useful. Just kind of like sharpen that sword a little bit, you know what I mean? TLDR, your honor, definitely need to go through and do all this math foundation stuff. Yeah, so... <laughs> This is where my understanding breaks down. I don't write on calculus, baby. Uh, linear algebra, A, vector calc. All right. So this is ideally where we end up. I feel like it couldn't hurt to go back and actually learn basic algebra to begin with <laughs> and brush up on the fundamentals. That is just, <laughs> it's just the biggest eyesore to look at. Just, it just, it just makes you want to cry. What should happen first? 24 divided by six or six times 24? You see, this is a good question. I don't know. I dead ass don't know. Isn't that crazy? That I don't know the division or multiplication happens first. You see, this is why we're doing the fucking basics. <laughs> if we were to like spell out the acronym, B-I-D-M, division multiplication. Division happens first. Does it even matter at the end of the day? I feel like it does. I, I, I'm not going to look at chat. All right. 24 divided by 6 times 2. It most certainly does matter. It is division. Although we've already discussed the difficulties, left to right ordering can cause. The defined order of operations doesn't prioritize between multiplication and division. So we perform them from left to right. Wait, really? All multiplication and division operations have the same priority. Oh. When evaluating operations as the same priority, we proceed from left to right, just as we read text in English. What? Really? That's fucking crazy. So if there's multiplication and division, you just read it left to right. None of them have priority. Wait, how did I not know that? Learn well, something new every day, I guess. God damn. All right. What is the value of the following expression? God damn. Damn, this is a big chunky boy. All right, can I do the entire thing in my head? Let's find out. The power two, four, six, 12 divided by six, two, six, take two is four, 
plus five, nine, submit. Bam! It's just too goddamn easy. Since addition can happen in any order, this is called the commute. commute. I can never pronounce that goddamn word, dude. Commute. Com. 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 <laughs> Commutative. Commutative? Commutative. Commute. Commutative. Commutative. Since addition can happen in any order, this is called the commute. Since addition can happen in any order, this is called the commutative property of addition. Yes! Let's go. We can rewrite this sum in a different order to make things more clear. What's the length of this bar? For a plus five. That's crazy. That was so intuitive right there. In this course will encounter many bar models as we could see. As we could see, we can express the lengths of algebraic expressions. Which expression represents the square of the sum of A and B? So it's A plus B squared. This problem we saw the importance of order of operations in evaluating expressions. The square of the sum is not the same as the sum of the squares. The first one we add then raise the power, while in the second we power then add. All right, well this, yeah, this is crazy. This is actually kind of good. I was half expecting them to be just extraordinarily easy and me not learn anything because I know all the basic fundamentals, sure. But in reality, there's just a few tiny little holes, a few tiny little leaks I need to plug up in my understanding of just the, the basics. Working through this feels really quite satisfying. This website is goddamn brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry, I will, I, will, I will never make that joke ever again. Alright anyway, boys, if you want to check it out, link in the description. I'm affiliated, but goddamn, if this site ain't goddamn awesome. Thanks for tuning into this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will uh, see you guys when I see you.